blockchain, revolutionary technology, or JPEG pyramid scheme? Well, it could be either or both, depending on which project you're talking about, but the bottom line is that it is going to be part of the future, and if you want to take part in that future without losing your shirt, you need to understand how it works. Hello, my name is Trent Fowler, and I'm a machine learning engineer, public speaker, and cryptocurrency analyst. This channel is the home of the Futurati podcast, where we dive into how emerging technologies will impact the world and your bank account. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Now on to the topic at hand. I've chosen to focus on Bitcoin specifically because it's the most famous and widely used blockchain, but having this information will give you a great foundation for studying any other blockchain system, even though the technical details do sometimes differ. The blockchain is a distributed ledger implemented by a decentralized, open-source, peer-to-peer network in which trust is established by the whole network via special consensus rules. Don't worry, we're going to explain what each of those terms mean, and I promise it's not that complicated. Let's start with distributed ledger. A distributed ledger is exactly what it sounds like. It is a ledger, which is a bookkeeping data structure that could track transactions, interactions, or many other things. That's distributed, which means that everybody has a copy of it. So it's like a spreadsheet that everyone has a copy of, and when the spreadsheet is updated, everyone gets a copy of the update as well. And believe it or not, this fairly simple technology actually has a lot of potential to profoundly change the world. At a fundamental level, the blockchain just is a distributed ledger. There's a lot of cryptography and assorted cleverness involved, but at the end of the day, it's a particular kind of database. And this ledger can't be changed. For all intents and purposes, it's immutable. It's not literally impossible to dispute a transaction that happened a long time ago, but that would just be stupendously difficult and expensive, so no one ever does. Past a certain point, therefore, we say that transactions are settled and immutable. This is usually after six blocks, which is about one hour. Okay, now let's discuss the fact that the blockchain is decentralized, open source, and peer-to-peer. Decentralized is a fairly intuitive term. It just means that there is no one in charge, standing in the middle of everything, making sure the numbers add up and there's no fraud. Of course, the blockchain still needs some way of making sure all the numbers add up and there's no fraud or else nobody would use it. But that is baked into the protocol used by the whole network. I talk about this more in my videos on blockchain transactions, blockchain blocks, and Bitcoin mining. Links are in the description. Open source just means that the code is published freely on the internet, where anyone can read it, fix it, or copy it. This may sound crazy. Why would you publish your code out in the open? Well, one of the advantages is that when lots of people are looking at code, it's easy to find bugs and fix them. One of the reasons that we know the Bitcoin network is secure is that the code has been out there for a decade. People have found bugs, they've fixed bugs, they've looked at it in all sorts of different ways trying to find a way to attack it. At this point, a lot of really smart people have studied the Bitcoin code, and if no one has figured out a way to directly hack the system yet, you can be reasonably confident that no one ever will. Finally, it's peer-to-peer. Now, you could argue that a network being peer-to-peer is another way of saying that it's decentralized. I mean, after all, if it's decentralized and there's no single node everyone's relating to, how else would it be structured? It would have to be peer-to-peer, right? In a sense, that's true, but I think it's worth stressing the underlying structure of the blockchain network because that will come to be important in the rest of the videos in this series when we talk about how transactions are validated, how blocks are mined, etc. So peer-to-peer simply means that each node in the blockchain network interacts with a fairly small number of other nodes. When a node takes part in a transaction, it will broadcast that to whatever peers it's connected to, like you do when you tell your friends about something you bought. Those nodes will broadcast it to their peers and so on until everyone in the network knows about this transaction. All this happens without ever going through a single entity that ensures the transactions are valid. There's no single node which holds that power because all the nodes hold that power. With all this talk about the blockchain, you might be asking yourself, okay, but what are the actual Bitcoins people are using to buy things? Bitcoin is just the currency built into the Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin rewards miners for securing the network. They use their computers to prove the validity of transactions in a process called mining. And in exchange, they receive Bitcoin, which they can trade with others for goods or services, or simply hold on to as an investment. The type of currency a blockchain has, or whether it has one at all, is one thing that separates the different types of blockchains. There's one last piece of the puzzle, and that's understanding why the blockchain is important. Luckily, we have everything we need to find the answer. 
Because it is an open and decentralized distributed ledger, the blockchain is a way for people to trade, even though they don't know each other, even though they are communicating over noisy and insecure channels, and even though there isn't any centralized authority keeping everything running. Unlike with traditional financial institutions, you can send money to anyone in the world securely, without permission, and without worrying about it being stopped. I hope you found this video enlightening. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out some episodes of the Futurati podcast where we talk about everything from crypto to AI to quantum computing to space exploration. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Trent underscore STEM punk. Thank you.